Hello, and welcome to Graphic Content. I'm Dave. And my name is Jack Turnbull. And uh, yeah, we're here to talk comics. Uh, this is the first episode in a, in a brand new series here at Somerville Media Center on SCAT TV. And um, we just wanted a chance to talk about a comic work, a graphic novel, a, uh, a cartoon, all of that sort of. Picture book. There you go, picture book. Mm -hmm. uh, in depth, we do, so we're not really going to be reviewing um, like a series of, of works. We're just going to focus on one work per episode. Um, and so this go around, we have this book here, which we both have our dog-eared, uh, annotated. poured over annotated copies yeah. of Band for Life by Anya Davidson. Uh, which came out last year. 2016. It was uh, my favorite book of the year, in fact. Yeah. Um, Why is that? Well, it's because she works in uh, multiple character perspectives. Um, she works with an authoritative voice. She's someone who's not just walked the walk, but can talk the talk. She's been in bands herself. Um, there's a high level of literary complexity that goes on in it. Um, to uh, an extent that it kind of rivals someone like Herman Melville or Thomas Pynchon or maybe even our Matt Groening, you know, with The Simpsons. Um, Just like this fully formed universe. Fully formed universe. With all these rich characters. And there's references to things both real and fantasy. Mm. Um, and like we had said earlier, like a good start would be like page nine, I would make as a reference, you know. It, you know, the second panel makes uh, a quotes uh, George Eliot, a uh, famous American, uh, excuse me, English Victorian era author, who uh, was, it was a pen name, she, it was, and it was actually a Mary Ann Evans, wow. author of Middlemarch. But then so we, how does she use, how does she Well, the context, context is that the band's practicing at the space, and their drummer, Ann Immel, um, Animal. Animal, uh, her uh, obsessive ex shows up at the door pining and wanting her back and she's all upset and crying obviously because she's being stalked but fortunately Krang's able to literally kick him out yeah. of the door in a comedic cartoony fashion. Um, a lot of good and, uh, physical comedy in this book. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Linda is attempting to make her feel better and says, Oh, sweetie, it's like George Eliot said, the shallow nature's dream of an easy sway over the emotions of others, trusting in their own petty magic to turn the deepest streams. In the next panel, she says, You're a deep stream, girl, and you're finally broken a spell. Honk, I feel so stupid. Wow, that's, <laughs> like, that's like a mouthful, you know? And it's yeah. like this very poetic thing that's hard to get your head wrapped around in this like fun comic. Yeah. You know? And so the the story is structured in these episodes. It's mm -hmm. uh, so those are kind of the chapters are like these two, three, sometimes four page episodes mm -hmm. um, because the thing was serialized at first um, out of Vice Comics. Online. Online. Yeah. Um, so it had kind of a uh, a short life there, and then she continued it on her blog, I believe. Um, and then Fantagraphics published the collected version. Yeah. Um, and so we were talking about characters, and the characters are members of this band. Um, Gun Tit. Gun Tit. Gun Tit. <laughs> Which is kind of a noise band, mm -hmm. uh, a loud rock band. Yeah. And um, so there's five initial members of, of it. Yep. And so you could say that um, the protagonist of the book is each of those members in the band. It's, it's, there's kind of multiple protagonists. It doesn't really focus on any, on any one of them too much, I don't think. Yeah, would you I would agree. Or? I, as I stated earlier, um, I feel that like Linda's definitely, she feels like the leader of the band. She seems like the right. spirit of the band. And in that sense, I would say that she's the main character. But beyond that, I think it's pretty equally spaced. Mm. Yeah. And like, like we, we were saying earlier also that um, it feels like each of those characters are part of Anya's personality, Anya Davidson's personality. Yeah. And probably the one that's most like it that I would venture to guess um, is uh, Linda. Yeah. Like yeah. she's just kind of the free spirit. She's 
kind of grounded, but also a little like and flighty. She, and initially, I think she's the one who makes the first sacrifice, which is a big theme in the book, which is you know personal sacrifice for the sake of uh, a communal art project. Um, and what it is, what it, what happens in the plot is they get a gig, and they need to get a van to get to the gig, and in true Anya Davidson fashion, um, all of a sudden, you know, reality kind of falls apart and genre shifts and they go into this dumpster and within it there's this kind of like Star Warsian Jabba character who can make diesel engine uh, vehicles run on grease, like, you know, restaurant grease. Yeah. And he asks $500 to do it and, you know, Linda has to give away her motorcycle. She trades it in, you know, so she makes the first initial sacrifice yeah. to get the van, which, you know, I think shows her spirit and her dedication, mm. you know. And that brings up a good point, because... Um, Page 19, one, yeah. One of the things that all the characters have to go through with in the book, they're like real world problems. Yeah. So like, and money is a big one. Yeah, yeah. So they all, they're all kind of, I would say, working class. And um, there's that passage where they sh express the angst of you can do something meaningful that eats up all your time. You can do something pointless that make a lot of money. Yeah. They're like, good thing we're like, I forget what page it's on. Yeah, so that's like a reoccurring uh -huh. theme throughout the book is yeah. like they are going through these kind of struggles that yeah. um, real world people that have a passion like uh, a band um, but often have to contend with. Mm -hmm. Paying rent and money and life. Being a parent. <laughs> yeah. Like, animal has to find a babysitter to do the gig, for example. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, like, the, the magic of the book, I guess, like, comes in where, where like, you know, you have... They're all kind of fanciful, fantastic-looking, uh, kind of gruesome characters. And, uh, and, and, and every now and again, like, the absurd humor... The punchline is 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 the gag at the end, like, mm -hmm. oh, don't despair too much, reader, for these characters because, uh, um, I don't know. Here's the punchline. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah. Anya Davidson's kind of referencing um, classic comics in that case, you know, like even mm -hmm. like Windsor McKay, where the payoff at the end was always like the kid falling out of bed. Mm -hmm. um, for sure. So there's always like a little like a little payoff, and it may be a single An panel. irony or something. Yeah. yeah, it may be like the single panel at the end of 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 a of a sequence, or it could be like a series of them. But but um, I, I just feel like sh that's that's a nice way to um, let humor kind of drive the story. Yeah, in a way that other stories just kind of let the um, uh, they they might let just kind of the the heaviness of the story take over, which is fine, but um, I think that approach for this this work would have been uh, wrong. And it, um, it, it, there's something really uh, magic magic about it. Going back to the aesthetic a little bit, you said, uh, oh, what, or Windsor McKay was that what you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking. It's kind of like if Ernie Bushmiller was hired to do some funkadelic album artwork. You know, it has yeah. this garish color scheme from the marker um, that's really highly saturated, and I, I kind of get the sense they all kind of feel like mutants. Yeah. And it's all kind of post-apocalyptic, and we'll, we'll get there on, you know, the, this page 62, the spread you were talking about, um, oh, yeah, yeah. about the state of the world that they're in and the status that they're in. But back to the aesthetics slightly, um, as I was stating earlier, um, when we did this before, uh, when we were talking earlier, um, in an Ernie Bushmiller fashion, there's nothing excess, you know? There's no, there's no lines that don't need to be in each panel. Every line has a purpose, I right. feel. Um, it's drawn with an economy. Each panel, there's a consistency of quality mm. between each panel. Yeah. You know, it feels like each panel had the same amount of work on the prior panel. Um, and as a result, the, the book's like, you know, geez, Louise, 256 pages? Yeah. That's a lot for, I don't know how long it took her to make, but that's a lot, period. Yeah. And it yeah. allows... It's ambitious. For it's sure. ambitious and allows for a lot of literary complexity, which is deeply lacking, I think, in a lot of comics because there's this thing where, and I'm not saying this is bad, but a lot of comics are 
trying to be turned into TV shows or movies, so they kind of read like TV shows or movies. Right. This some feels... people writing for yeah. for it ready to be translated in some other, mm -hmm. some and, other medium. Yeah, and this this has a high word count, and as a result, she can pack a whole lot of punch, you know? Yeah. Going back, you know, we have the George Eliot quote. Next, we have like a reference to Anton Levy. Then we have references to chainsaw sculpture art. And then the final panel is this kind of like a fish guy asking for bass strings, you know? <laughs> like it's just all over the place, yeah. and yet it works. It's, it flows, you know? Yeah. It's, it's accessible, you know? It's both very divergent and accessible. Right. You know? And a lot of that has to do with the medium of comic itself. Yeah. Oh yeah. So going back to what what you what we had talked about earlier, um, and we keep saying like what we had talked about earlier. We had a technical mishap. We actually did this once before, but um, we did it on purpose. We did it on purpose. We had yeah. a run through, and so this is the um, this is the second take, the second better superior take. Yeah. <laughs> um, so page sixty two. Just going back to like the stuff we were talking about. It's a double page spread, and. Linda, the main character, is talking to her boyfriend and she's just kind of lamenting over real world problems about um, racist cop killing people. It's and really Palestinian conflict. Yeah, and so like these really, really heavy world problems. And, um, and, then, and then it starts you know, dwindling down to their more domestic issues, and namely uh, a leak in the ceiling. And then, so the leak in the ceiling ends up like being a burst, uh, like septic pipe or something. And mm -hmm. so the gag, the, the, the final panel at the end of this double page spread is the two of them holding hands while they're uh, waist deep or knee deep in sewage. Um, and Linda says, with you by my side, even a flood of untreated sewage feels like a day at the beach. And, um, and there's just really nice moments like that. Um, Interpersonal relationships. Yeah, that these people don't hate each other. There's and a ten they, yeah. they, they love each other, in fact. And they're all, they've all, yeah, like... You can tell, like, Day Anya Davidson, she, she's a culture vulture, and she, like, she loves life a little bit, you know? Like, she's able to see the tragedy of things, but there's so many interests yeah. in here, like, yeah, yeah, and they're yeah. all exposed. I was saying to you earlier that this book demands, like, someone publish a comp compendium to it. So you can like, you know, go all down these rabbit holes of all these separate different, you know, uh, references, you know, going from Captain Beefheart to Ghanaese movie posters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to, yeah, like she was like, there's a page where she's going to watch a movie and like, you know, you just get online. You're like, what the yeah. heck, you know? And then simultaneously, some of these things are real, but then some of them aren't real. Um, for example, like Shredburger, you know, like the venues they play at, yeah. you know, like the, 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 f What's again. the scrotum one? The, <laughs> the, is it what the scrotum? Is the scrotum is it, one? Yeah. Well, Shredburger is the, I just love Shredburger, <laughs> you know, with the burger and the hot dog with the guitars and the, and she puts like uh, boots on them or something. Yeah. The scrotum club, was that it? <laughs> that one? Yeah, she's created this like really rich um, yeah. alternative universe. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it, it could be um, dystopian. But it's also one in which, like, I don't know, you, you get the sense like art and music are a little el more elevated. Yeah. In it's it, and art making and mark making and even just there's a character who's like a, a doctor or a nurse, um, Elliot, who is um, one of the other characters' uh, boyfriends. I think Krang's boyfriend, mm -hmm. who. Uh, you know, who's a helper. Like, I feel like everybody's just really... He's a bit more straight-laced, yeah. Yeah, I feel like everybody's just in a... All the characters are in a position to help, whether it be through art or through uh, medicine. Um, and the negative characters are, are really like the, uh, like the guy who runs after... Um, the the other kid, Renato, the guy yeah. who runs down Tattoo Renato. artist. Yeah, he's like, he's like bad. All the bad characters are... Are really like bad. Is a I, tattoo artist who's running the tattoo yeah. parlor as a as a drug it, front. I feel it's like it's like a love letter to transgression, or like a love letter to the underground. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it feels it feels like it, and yeah, like I was saying, like this is in in the vein, and I hesitate to even say it. It's but in, in the vein of the like paper rad. Um, and underground, and even going back further, the underground comics of yeah. of, of uh, Zap comics. Um, it's it's all within that vein, but it feels like the natural evolution of it. Like like whereas that stuff, like Zap comics was very male and very kind of testosterone driven. Um, 
and it needed to happen that way. And then you have, uh, you know, the Fort Thunder, which was all kind of psychotropic and wild and um, absurdist and didn't make sense a lot, uh, um, even though their narratives were pretty clear. I feel like here you have, um, you know, a, a clear narrative, you know, a clear vision, well-rounded characters, but it all still feels a very much a part of that heritage. Well, that kind of brings us maybe to her experience with underground culture and specifically, like, noise rock. Right. And um, as I had stated earlier, Anya David, someone who's not just talking the talk, she's walked the walk of being in a band. Yeah. And um, I've been in a couple bands, and it is a really kind of unique relationship because you do build relationships with these people. Yeah. You know, um, and yet they, it's hard to know what the boundaries are. Um, you know, for example, there's even like a love triangle with Renata. Renato right. And, you know, Linda and everything. Um, and yet there's this common goal, which is to make the song and to make the art. And you put everything else on hold and you have to make sacrifices in order to do that. Um, and right. everyone's reacting to everyone. I think one thing that was really fun about this comic is there's this juxtaposition of characters who have no idea what they're doing with music to like someone like Linda who's talking about different time signatures and right. has references to like Captain Beefheart and you know has a huge history of it and yet the, the um, synthesizer player is like when I put a you know, cinder block on this it yeah. sounds gnarly you know like so there is a celebration of uh, the disfigured and the distorted and you know uh, you know a big middle and finger punk. To, punk yeah, yeah like big middle finger to quote unquote good taste right you know? right you know, like, and, and it's a big, it's kind of a big contrast to like where music is now, you know, like you get a sense like, yeah. like punk, uh, the punk sensibility is much more packaged and so that, you know, does it even make it punk anymore? I don't, That know. brings us to a Crystal Coyote, the band that they're envious of, those like, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the hipsters. Who's a little more on a commercial track. Yeah, yeah. Hunks with catchy hooks or schmucks with silly hair. <laughs> Are the successful always deserving? Are the deserving always successful? Yeah, yeah I, I would love to like gift this to a person. This is like the perfect gift for anybody that's in a band. Yeah. I feel I feel like um, a lot of the experiences that uh, I imagine band members have yeah. just with, you know, practices, uh, yeah. trying to get people to like be on schedule, trying to record People's an album, problem, like going on a tour. Annabelle being an alcoholic in right. the story, you yeah. know, everyone brings their personal lives to a little bit, yeah. And I feel like Animal and... Um, You're uh, Linda. Linda are a yin yang. Of, exactly. Saying, yeah. yeah, so there's an interesting uh, tension there between those two, especially, it, and, it, and it culminates in um, Animal getting kicked out of the band a little yeah. later on. And spoiler. Spoiler alert. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and so Animal uh, has to do her own thing with that, and the band has to move on. But they, they just felt like the negative energy was like building up a little too much. And so it's well, an it was a whole episode with their equipment. Yeah. Yeah. So Animal yeah. screwed up big time. Uh, off. Right. And made off with, with the equipment uh, right when their big gig was about to happen. It's a big book. A lot happens. <laughs> a lot of adventures. And so, yeah. So what, what I appreciate about this is like there's a tendency is that it's, it's serialized and episodic. And there's not like a reset button at, at the end of each one, the way that you sometimes get yeah, with certain comics. Yeah. Like, oh, this was cool and interesting, but what, um, yeah. you know, the band is all happy in the next chapter. Yeah. It's like, no, it, like actions have consequences. And, and the band's going through an entropy. Like, there's the whole thing where no one can hear. There's a whole chapter where everyone's just mishearing each other. Like, Renato gets really beat up. And he's like losing his hair, right? You know, and uh, he uh, he has a hard time being a tattoo artist again. And he is in love with Linda, so yeah. he had, there's this unrequited love, yeah, um, which often hap happens when you're working in close quarters with a team of people like that. Is um, mm -hmm. or maybe it doesn't happen all that often. I'm just imagining. Well, that it might. if it happens or not, you have to put your feelings aside for exactly. the greater good of the art. Exactly. You know? And uh, so, yeah, it, it's, it's really well-rounded, even from the beginning. Like, yeah. I appreciate how Anya um, n knew what, she, what, had a sense of the characters from the beginning of the project. It's not like they're, they're not fully formed and then, like, you have to see 
uh, a clunky process of character mm -hmm. building. Um, no, no, it's 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 like you get a sense of who these characters are from the beginning, and yeah. and then as as it goes through, Anya is finding out more about them as well, and um, you just have a, a, a really great a really great book. And the environment is rich too. Mm. Like, let's talk about the bookends a little bit and how fun it oh, is. Oh yeah, it's like a flyer page. Yeah, it's part like of that. being in a coffee shop in like the coolest bohemian, gnarliest part of town. And you have like someone having Electrophone, Electro Honey Distortion Pedal, gently used for 65 bucks. Here's a tribute for Graham McDonald. Come mourn the loss and celebrate the life of a true heavy metal hero. Kind of looks like a Captain Beefheart or something. Yeah. Um, look at this great kind of graffiti-ish typography. Legends of House, singer wanted, hardest rockin' band in the Midwest seeks belter with killer pipes. <laughs> Pro attitude a must. Our last singer was a nut job, so please have your bleep together. Influences and in cool drowning hat, Zach's gif hose motor. Great like silly band names, yeah. you know? Just adding to like the whole. Yeah, um, yeah. Converging the yeah. fantasy with the reality. Of the universe that she created. For totally. sure. Totally. It's just a blast to read. So yeah, yeah, it is a blast. I can't recommend this book um, mm -hmm. enough. Um, I had a nice, I experienced it like a nice slow read. I didn't, I didn't blaze my way through it. I read a little each night. And yeah. I, I, that, that, that was a good way to do it for me. I really enjoyed it that way and I got to savor the art. And if you, um, yeah, if you want to go down to the rabbit hole a little bit too, you could go back and try to hunt down Anya's band from like 2003, The Coughs which uh, was, had about six members in it and had uh, two, two percussionists who played on these, like, they looked like uh, nuclear waste bins, and, like drumsticks, awesome. so, like really, uh, yeah, kind of like DIY homemade percussion sets. I saw her play in Providence before I knew about this book or anything. She's the lead singer of the Coughs. I think you, you know, find it on eBay or something, you know, cool. put out and load records, Providence, Rhode Island record label. So yeah, so happy hunting on that guy's record collectors. So right on. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, how are we doing for time? We're do we're doing all right. I think we have just enough time. Oh, okay. For um, Jack's corner. Jack. <laughs> is gonna, um, Jack is gonna. Uh, no, that's me. Jack is gonna uh, talk a little bit about um, what he's reading right yeah. now. So, um, in case. Band for Life is, does, is not enough reading material. I brought along this here too, Jack Cole's Deadly Horror, the chilling archives of horror comics put out by Yo Books, a subsidiary of IDW, editor Craig Yo. Yo. Craig Yo. Um, this is a kind of interesting book because this is a author who uh, was in, uh, uh, ex set as an example, exhibit A really, in um, Frederick Wortham's Seduction of the Innocent, which is a text uh, that was used during a censorship campaign in the 1950s against comic books. Um, Wortham was suggesting and that comic books were turning kids into juvenile delinquents. Um, ruining the country. Ruining the country, exactly. The infamous panel, let's right here, the infamous panel uh, anti-comics crusader Dr. Frederick Wortham labeled an injury to the eye motif. True Crime Comics, volume one, number two. You know, to live in yeah. infamy. You know, kind of famous amongst us, you know, people who dabble in cartooning. Yeah. Um, but anyway, this is a collection of Jack Cole's more spooky stuff. Um, Really, really fun. Kind of if you're a fan of, like, you know, Tales from the Crypt, this is going to be right up your alley. Um, one of my favorite ones includes the Orgy of Death, in which there is a god and illustrations of Moloch, who was this pagan god. Um, and if you go to the Boston Public Library, you can see another portrait of Moloch by John Singer Sargent. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Good recommendation. Yeah, Jack Cole, famous guy. And uh, yeah, so I I think we'll do it again. We'll do it again. We'll do it again next month. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about another comic, uh, another graphic novel piece, and uh, come back to you again next month. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you, Jack. Thank you, Dave. <laughs>
Thanks, everybody. Yeah. All right. Great. Go team. Read comics.